This is the golden question. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 16 of the Golden Question podcast. And today we're going to be answering the question, how to win every socialist debate. And what I mean by that is how to win every debate against the socialist in favor of capitalism. Now, some of these tactics that I'm getting for this podcast are going to be ones done by Gene Epstein in his Socialism versus Capitalism debates um, on the Jacobin magazine as well as the Soho Forum debate. So these are two popular debates against uh, two renowned socialists, most uh, notably uh, Richard D. Wolff, and that is with the Soho Forum debate. So what Gene Epstein does in these debates is he tries to level the grounds against his opponent, and he tries to form similarities between the two in some of the ideas. Something that you need to understand about socialism is that it is a system. So it's a system that needs to be enacted, that has a bunch of rules that needs to be uh, that need to be followed, um, a bunch of laws that need to be governed. Now, capitalism, I would argue, is not a system. It's sort of a lack of a system. You let the free market, you let people make their own interactions, you let people make their own decisions, you let people follow the own laws that they think they need to follow. So there are no laws governing their own decisions in the economy. They create their own laws and they govern their own laws, whether that be individually as a worker or as a owner, a property owner, a, a capitalist, a factory owner. You create laws that are applicable to only your company. And then in that sense, you could follow your, uh, your own laws. You're not obliged to follow anybody else's laws. And this is, again, mainly on an economic realm. So if you compare socialism to capitalism, the, what Gene Epstein hints at in his debates, he doesn't make it clear, but he hints at this, that socialism is a system, capitalism is a lack of a system. So it's not like socialism and capitalism are two, uh, you know, two different systems that are different and that you know, we're trying to debate on which system is better. It's essentially, should we have a system or should there be no system at all? And that's, I think, a fundamental uh, foundation that you need to lay down before you pile on and add more to that debate with evidences and, um, and sources. So you need to understand that your opponent is arguing for a system, and you need to make that clear. Your opponent is arguing for a system. There needs to be a system enacted with laws, with punishments, with rewards, etc. Versus capitalism, where there are no laws, there are no punishments, there are no rewards. It's basically a free-for-all. So capitalism, lack of system, socialism is a system. And you're arguing whether or not we should have a system. What Epstein then does is he says, you know what, since capitalism is a lack of a system and it's essentially everybody following their own system, why not allow an individual in, ca in a capitalist society, in a society that is systemless, meaning there is no one system imposed on everybody, everybody gets to choose their own system, why not allow a capitalist to run a socialist model? Why not allow a capitalist to operate a business in which he operates it the way he would have operated under socialism. And he does this very interestingly. He, he goes to the opponent, he goes, you know what? Everything you've said so far, everything you've argued in favor of socialism, the way that the business should be structured, where the workers get 100% of the profits, everything centers around the workers, there are no capitalists, there are no you know means of, of gaining capital in the company besides selling the goods, there are no uh, in, uh, investors. He says, you know what? That system that you have, perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. And you know what? You could do that under capitalism. If you feel like that's the best way to run a, a business fundamentally, because you, you could trickle it down to just a single business. If a single business can follow the socialist idea, the, your opponent should be for it and should argue that, yes, this is the most efficient way you can run a business versus a business that is under uh, capitalism, a limitless, uh, a systemless society. So he says, you know what, if you think that's the most efficient way to run a company or to run a business, 
be it, right? Do it under a capitalist society. Do it. No one's stopping you. There are since capitalism is a, is a systemless society, you could have your own system in here without any punishments. Every because everybody else has their own systems, and you know what? It's not fair for you to force your system on others. So let your system be a beacon of of prosperity and essentially hope in this capitalist society. So I think this is a great tactic that Gene Epstein uses. He says, let your system play out in capitalism, right? Start your own company, actually, or even if you can't start your own company, persuade other companies to follow your system. If it is this you know, amazing system that'll allow the business to run more efficiently, right? If if it's more efficient to run a business under workers versus having a, an owner and a capitalist there with investors, if it's more efficient, if you're going to produce a better outcome, and if workers are going to want to uh, move towards that, that company, that business, why not do it? First, start it off from there. And, and this is where he goes on to the revolutionary aspect of socialism. Why not, instead of trying to forcefully, you know, put socialism to the gun in, on everybody, essentially, right? Storming into the to the White House, firing shots, assassinating, you know, the president, whatever, which is similar to what the Russian Revolution was, where they assassinated the czar. Why not start socialism in which one company follows the ideas of socialism and then it spreads, right? Workers flock to that company because it's successful, uh, consumers buy from that company because it's producing these amazing products that wouldn't otherwise be produced um, as in, in comparison to other capitalist running businesses. And then from there, it could merge and it could spread to other companies. And from that sense, you could have your socialist revolution without a single fire being shot or with it, without a single uh, gun being shot. So Epstein, I think, does this beautifully. He's And then he... Uh, I know I'm going in order. I mean, essentially he does this in order uh, that I'm telling you now. Um, but there might be some minor differences there because again, these are he does a lot of debates, but I'm only focusing on these two debates. But after he argues that, he says this is what makes capitalism more uh, uh, morally right. In that capitalism allows you to have other systems to run in place. If you have an idea to run a company better than a socialist, right, better than workers completely owning the, the means of production, you could do that in other capitalism. Capitalism allows all these individual systems to complete. And essentially, he, he I like how he starts off the debate and he dives into the, the actual means of running a business. Because again, socialism, capitalism are terms that are synonymous for not only economics but also politics but he's he forgets about the politics he looks at it merely at an economic level how does a single business run and if and he says if a single business in your point in your argument is more effective more efficient under socialism than it is under capitalism that is if it follows socialist principles versus capitalist principles run it under capitalism have a capitalist umbrella to allow all these systems to compete sort of like an op you know like a forum like an open debate where all these companies can compete with all these different ideologies and the one that works the best is the one that shines and the one that prevails and then you could apply it as an umbrella or you don't even need to apply it as an umbrella it'll naturally spread and then ultimately all companies all businesses in that econ economy would follow that socialist principle and ironically or unironically, it's still held under capitalism because you have all these systems competing, right? Under socialism, there's only one system that can prevail. That's it. No, nobody can make an alternative system. Under capitalism, you have a spectrum of systems, a limitless number of systems. And this is why, this is where you can turn the whole socialist capitalist debate on its head or, you know, flip it over and turn the argument into all right, you're arguing for something that I'm not against. You're arguing for something that could be implemented, but if you were to implement it, why would you not implement it already under capitalism, where you have the freedom to choose different systems and experiment? 
and the very fact that we're sitting here having this debate it's all it's good that we have you know a free society in which we could have this debate but also why not instead of you know just debating it which is a good way of getting your ideas out but instead of just debating it why not start your own company and set your ideas and to prove that this company runs more efficiently rather than just talking right act and let your actions speak for for um for themselves versus your words run a business under the socialist idea prove to me that it it is more efficient it is more effective than a, a, a business that runs under uh following capitalist principles and over here i'm going to interject my uh opinion and that is in my opinion this is why socialists want to force their system upon others not intentionally okay so th they're not i don't think that every socialist knows that his system is corrupt knows that his system won't do good um and you know if he that he's hungry for power i do think there's a lot of ignorance in becoming a socialist and a lot of the socialists today are just purely ignorant but i would argue that a, a reason why many socialists forcefully try to uh you know convert others to agree with their ideology rather than doing what I said, which is start a company, have socialist ideas, have socialist principles, and see if it can compete with capitalist companies. Um, the reason why they don't want to do that is because they know they're going to fail. They know that if they actually were to compete with a capitalist nation or a capitalist country for this matter, they know they're going to fail. So they have to force the entire country to convert to socialism. Because they know that if they do it in, uh, as a as a single company, they know they're going to get failed, and they're going they know they're going to get exposed as this system that doesn't work. So they the only way for them to do this uh, to enact, to to force socialism is to implement it on a national level, to force everybody to abide by it, completely eradicate any capitalist system, any capitalist way of forming a company, so that there's nothing to compare it to, and ultimately. We've seen this through the, the Cold War, I guess, where you saw the Soviet Union. It forced socialism uh, around its nation, and the Soviet Union slowly wants to grow. Why does it want to grow? Because it doesn't want any alternative system to spur up and to show how bad socialism is. So that's why it tries to expand as much as possible. And unfortunately, obviously, it couldn't have won the U.S. And the U.S. clearly showed uh, showed its showed the world and showed even its own people that capitalism is a far more superior system than socialism. Anyways, back to the podcast. So he, I think this is a fascinating way to debate a socialist, and I've never heard it this way. Right when we usually get to the capitalism socialism debate, you always you know tend to go through all right, our business is more efficient, and you talk about it as a whole under the umbrella. But what Epstein does is he says, you know what, I don't disagree with you. Run your business however you want. Run your business the socialist way. But do so under capitalism, because capitalism, you can't do that. But under socialism, you can't run your company capitalist. And last but not least, this is the final bit, he concludes into saying essentially that People should take note of this or should, should take an opinion on this. You can run your socialist company under capitalism, but you cannot run your capitalist company under socialism. And he ends it off with the, just that one statement, um, I believe, at one of his, uh, the end of his debates, at the end of the conclusion spe uh, speech at the end. And I think that that was a fascinating way for him to end his speech, where he says... Um, you can run your socialist company under capitalism, but you can't run your capitalist country, uh, your capitalist business or company under socialism. And I think that right there says it all, right? You have capitalism, which is this open system, which allows all these different systems to compete and to shine and to destroy each other or ones to, that prevail. And ultimately, the consumer and the employee is held at the, the voting block, essentially, the, the voting booth. The consumer and the worker is the one that chooses what system is best because the workers are going to go to the company that they like best. Are they going to go towards a socialist company or are they going to go to a capitalist company? So let the worker decide there. And also, are the consumers going to buy goods that they think are more valuable 
that are produced by a socialist company or a capitalist company. Ultimately, you are going to let the consumers and the workers decide, and they have that freedom to choose under capitalism, because capitalism allows all these competing uh, competing ideas and systems to essentially play themselves out in the landscape versus socialism where you just have one single system that all companies are forced to to follow that all workers are forced to work for and all consumers are forced to buy in and that's pretty much it and i think everyone who's trying to learn how to debate a socialist should watch these debates really study them and I think I've done a great job in trying to summarize a bit in, in a concise manner some of the techniques that Gene Epstein uses that I that blew my mind. I've never seen them before, and I found were, were really interesting. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and stay safe.